planer. And now we've got a reference surface, as we mentioned before, that's nice and flat, that's going to sit against here because the blades are on top on the planer. They're going to be taking material off the top. So the way a planer is set up, as we mentioned before, it's got an in-feed roller and an out-feed roller that help hold it flat as it goes through. And the cutter head is in the middle, and it's rotating this way into the board being fed into it. And because of that, the way it's sweeping out here, we want the grain to be going from down here up into the back top of the, of the board that's being fed through there. That'll help keep it from tearing out as much. If we, uh, if we look at this board, for example, the grain is relatively straight, but it is going from here upward to here. I'll draw that like that. And that would be the same on the other side. Now, we'll, we'll try to orient the boards going through this, this direction and make sure uh, that everything comes out the other side OK. If it's tearing out, you might, you might want to turn it around and try it going the other way. But once you've established a direction, you want to keep it that way. And we want to take a relatively equal amount off of board, both sides of this board as it goes through. After we've gotten on this one, after we've cleaned all the, the rough stuff off the top, then we know we've got a uh, uniform thickness throughout the board. We're going to want to start flipping it as it goes through the planer. The way to flip it is the grain is going up and to the back here. If I flip it this way, the grain is still going up and to the back. However, if I flip it this way, now I've reversed the grain direction. So as a general rule, once I've established that I'm not getting any tear out and my grain is going the proper direction, I'm going to want to flip it end for end as it goes through. The other thing I like to do, now we've only got one board here that we're dealing with, but if I had a very large pile of stuff, I want to make sure I've got a system set up that will make sure that I treat everything consistently as it goes through here. And I don't mix up where I've, where I've left a board and its grain direction and so on. So what I do is get two carts. I put one at the in feed and one at the out feed. And I might have 10, 20 boards on here that I'm dealing with. I stack them up. And as I put them through the planer, I'm going to just bring them up in the exact same orientation that they were and put them on the outfeed. And once I've, once I've gotten everything through onto the outfeed table, then I'm going to swap these carts. And I'm going to use this one for the outfeed and bring this one back to the infeed. And what I'm going to do is make sure that I bring everything back in the same orientation that it was. And now as I feed them through, I can flip them, put it back on the outfeed and swap everything around again. This, this ensures, because if I start just taking boards one by one and setting them any, anywhere randomly, I might flip things around, I might lose track of which side I've taken material off of. So determine a system that works for you and make sure you stick with it every time. That's, that's the most important thing is just be consistent in what you do. We've only got one to deal with here. But what I do need is something to use as a test piece. It doesn't have to be the same type of wood, it doesn't have to be the same size or anything, but it does have to be um, somewhat the same thickness because if I put it through, and I'm going to be putting it through several times and I'm going to be raising the, the bed so I take a little bit more off each time, if I only had my one piece and this was a critical piece and I needed to get to three quarters of an inch and I overshot that and I ended up with something under three quarters of an inch, I would lose this piece of wood. So I'm always going to send a test piece through first and make sure that it's at the correct thickness before I send this one through. So there's a few controls on the planer. This one happens to be an uh, electronically controlled planer. A lot of them just have a, a knob that you crank to, to move things up and down and a speed knob. The speed at which this feeds through determines the how um, smooth of a surface I end up with. If I feed it very quickly through there, I'm going to end up with ripples on there because the planer blade can't keep up with the speed in which it's being fed through the planer. 
And uh, you can even see some of this that was left on the jointer that's a very similar situation, uh, some ripple marks there. So you have to set the speed correctly. And usually when we're first running, especially if I have a lot to run through, when we're first running it through, I'll set it at a relatively high speed because I don't care about the finish yet. And then right at the end when I'm taking my final passes, I'll, I'll slow the machine down so that I can get the final passes as smooth as possible. And then we have the up and down on this particular machine. And that just moves this bed. The bed moves up and down. It's the cutter head stays stationary. Some planers, the cutter head moves up and down and the bed stays stationary. But in either case, what we're doing is widening or narrowing the opening, and which determines how much we're taking off. And we want to, in general, not take off more than 16th of an inch, if we can help it. This machine is fairly large. It could handle maybe taking up to an eighth of an inch, but it, it puts a lot of load on the planer. A smaller planer is not going to be able to do that. So try to stay under a 16th of an inch on each pass if you can. Now, the really important thing to figure out here is I might have a situation where because of how uh, warped this board was when it went through the jointer, I might only have, say, 13 sixteenths at this corner maybe, and I could have uh, over an inch on this corner. In this case, I do have over an inch on this corner, um, and here I have under an inch. So I want to go through my whole pile of boards and find out where the thickest spot is on them so that I can set the planer to the appropriate height. I wouldn't want to set it to 13 sixteenths of an inch if I had a whole bunch of boards that had a uh, thickness of an inch because it would bog the planer down. Uh, and it can, it can be tricky because you might have all the edges uh, fairly thin, but the, the middle has got uh, the thick part. So look through the whole board, see where your thickest spot is, and we're just over an inch. So I'm going to set my initial setting on here at an inch. I'll run all my boards through. Some of them might be so narrow that the planer doesn't even hit them, and I'll just send them through. But eventually, as I bring it up, I'll be hitting all the boards. So I'm going to use the, there's a ruler right here on the, on the planer that I'm going to use to set it with. And right now, we're not as critical in terms of what we need for a thickness. We're just trying to get it in the ballpark. So I'm just setting it for approximately an inch. I'll run my test piece through first, and then I'll run this through. And we'll just keep going. We'll keep raising the table until we get close to our three quarters of an inch thickness, and then we'll stop and take a look at it. Yeah, most important thing, one of the most important things on this machine is the dust collection. Almost more than any other machine in the shop, this creates a huge amount of shavings as, it, as the board goes through. If you don't have the dust collector on, what can happen is all those shavings get pushed into the surface of the board by the outfeed roller as it comes out. You end up with a bunch of little pock marks on there. We're at an inch right now, so I'm going to run this. measure the test piece every time it went through because I knew I was well above where I needed to be. And now as I'm getting closer, I want to make sure that I'm double checking. I like to use either a hook rule like this. It's got a little hook on the end of it that hooks over here and I can precisely read what's on there. And I'm at about 13 sixteenths. The other thing you can use is a calipers that will even more precisely measure what we've got. And this is showing exactly 13 sixteenths at this point. So now what I want to do is on these last two passes, 
This is where I might slow the machine down if I need to. Um, but also to ensure the best possible surface, I want to take as light a cut as I can. So what I like to do when I get close here is take now a 32nd of an inch off of either side to help get it nice and smooth. And that's, that can help you when you're getting severe tear out, take, out, take very light cuts. Now one thing to watch out for though, is if you take too light of a cut on many planers, you can run into a problem. If you look back, if we come on this side and look back at this pressure roller on the infeed, notice it's, it's got corrugations on it, little ridges here, and that's to help it really get a grip as it goes in. This is putting an enormous amount of pressure on the piece as it goes in, and it can create indentations in the wood that could be greater than maybe a 64th of an inch deep. If you tried to take a super light cut, maybe less than a 64th, you wouldn't actually remove those ridges that have been imprinted into the wood, and it would come out with a bunch of ridges in there, or indentations. So you gotta make sure, uh, and different planers uh, act differently that way. Some planers have a rubber roller on the end feed, and so you don't run into that problem. So you need to know your planer, and know what the minimum cut that you can take is. It's usually pretty safe, um, 32nd of an inch is pretty easy for most planers to do. So I'm gonna just move it up a 32nd of an inch, and this is where I want to make sure I've got the test piece, and often I'll have more than one test piece. If I've got a pretty big pile here, I don't wanna uh, lose any of that wood. I'm gonna have a couple test pieces, just in case I overshoot on the first one, I've got another one that I can play with. So I'm gonna uh, move it up, set it, take a 32nd off of each side, and then we'll double check. And often on planers that have a, a handle that you can move, they usually have uh, something like a full turn of the handle is maybe a sixteenth of an inch, so you can go a half a turn or a quarter turn to get what you need. talked a little bit earlier about snipe and snipe is something that most planers do. It uh, varies from planer to planer uh, depending on, on the situation and it, uh, what it is, a very exaggerated version of it, there's a little bit of a dip at the beginning and the end of the board. Uh, this is again very exaggerated, it's a little bit less on here and usually if I can't see it, which I actually can here, it's right about here. Uh, if not, I can usually feel it. And that's the reason we leave the board a bit longer for the planer. And that's almost four inches in on this particular one. Uh, but on this side, it's a little bit less. It's, it's about three inches or so. So you need to know what your planer snipes and leave extra material on the board so we can cut that off in the, um, when we cross cut it. Some things you can do to minimize snipe. Uh, one, you can take a lighter cut. Lighter cuts tend to help um, with a little bit less snipe. The other thing you can do is, if it's really critical, you can run boards through end to end. So as the first board's going in and it's going through the planer, you butt this one up against it and run it through. And that'll uh, minimize the snipe on both, of, both the tail end of the first board and the front end of the second board. The other thing to watch for is that it's going in level. If it goes in like this, it's going to snap down and it's going to uh, snipe on the front end. And if it's coming out and it's not supported on the back end and it starts sagging like this, uh, the head's going to be cutting into the back end as it goes through. So try to make sure, especially if you have really long boards, get a helper on the outfeed to help you hold it so it's level coming out. Alright, we're ready for the next step.